In my earlier video showing the difference between ranking and optimization, I showed the benefit of doing optimization over ranking in terms of maximizing total benefits. In this video, I want to elaborate a bit on what I showed in that earlier video. Specifically, I want to point out that what you rank on can have an impact on the effectiveness of ranking. In some scenarios, ranking on its own can be almost as effective as optimization. If you had not yet watched my first video on ranking and optimization, please do so now. Otherwise, what I'm about to show you may not make much sense. I will leave a link to the first video on ranking and optimization in the description below this video. So let's go over to Excel and revisit the two examples that I showed in my earlier video. So here I've got my list of projects that I showed in the earlier video. And just briefly again, for each project I've got a cost, I've got a calculated benefit and a benefit cost ratio. And we assume these are the, the best um, economic projects on each of my network segments. And, and from this list of candidate projects, I want to choose those projects which will give me the maximum benefit for my available budget, which I've put in this cell here, which has a named range equal to budget. And by turning this flag on and off, I can calculate what is the cost of my selected projects and the total benefit of my selected projects. So these formulas is just the sum of the product between cost and this chosen flag, which is a one or a zero. And in the case of this total benefit, it's the sum of the product between the benefit and the chosen flag. So by making this flag for the chosen field equal to zero, I can turn all my projects off. So in my earlier video, I showed that if I ranked on benefit, then I don't get as much uh, total benefit as by doing full optimization. Let's look at that again. So first, I'm going to just rank this on benefit. And I'm going to rank it from largest to smallest. And now I'm going to turn on projects until I exceed my available budget. So you see, if I switch on this project number two, then I exceed my budget of 330 because now the total cost of these chosen projects are 350. So I have to switch that last project off again. And now I'll slip in under my budget uh, with a net, uh, benef net total benefit of 1958. And I'm just going to fill it into my array here. 1958. <clears throat> and now what I'm going to do is to set all of these flags to zero again. And I'm going to now do optimization using Excel's optimizer. I explained that in my earlier video, so I'm not going to give the details about that again. I open up my solver. I've got my conditions already set up and I can just click on solve and accepting that solution. So you can see this has given me a to total benefit of 2216, 2216, which gives me a 13% improvement in the total benefit compared to just ranking it on benefit. <clears throat> However, it was pointed out to me that, of course, what I sort on here or what I rank on will make a difference. And that is indeed true. So if I go and rank this list, this optimized list, if I rank that now on benefit cost ratio instead of benefit like I did earlier, from the best benefit cost ratio to the smallest, then you can see all of the chosen project, projects by the optimal solution are in the top ranked uh, um, projects in terms of benefit cost ratio. So if I had just done ranking based on benefit cost ratio, I would have got, gotten exactly the same solution of 2216. So you can see that if I was going to uh, do my ranking on benefit cost ratio, then the total benefit would be exactly the same as in the case of when I was actually doing optimization. So you could conclude, at least for this, these parameters, cost benefit and benefit cost ratio, that the ranking on benefit cost ratio will always give you the same solution as optimizing. But that's not necessarily true. 
It depends also on the uh, number of projects in your list. So let's go over, over to the big um, project list where we've got 200 projects. And previously I've listed here my total benefit if I rank based on benefit. Um, it's shown there and I'm just going to redo my optimization again. And you can see the optimization uh, algorithm gives me a total benefit of 30765, which is a 2% improvement if I just rank purely on benefit. Now let's go and see what happens if I rank on benefit cost ratio. So I'm going to take this solution and I am just going to set all my projects to zero. And then I'm going to take all of these 200 projects, rank them on benefit cost ratio instead of benefit like I did earlier. Right, and now I'm going to again turn on the projects until my budget, available budget of 4567 is exceeded by the total cost of selected projects. So I'm just going to drag this down. So you see, if I switch on all these projects up to here, then I exceed my budget. So I have to, to turn some of these back again. So I'm just going to switch off projects until I get in under that budget of 4567. So there I'm almost at my budget. If I switch on one more project, I don't make it. So you can see that the total benefit, if I rank it on benefit cost ratio, is 30729. So that is just below the total benefit that I get when I do optimization. So that's the benefit that I got when I did optimization. And if I rank on BC ratio, I get 30729. So if I compare these two, so you can see in this case, it looks like there's almost no benefit by optimizing. But if I, if I change my, my decimals and I can see I'm making a slight improvement by doing the optimization, it just in less than 1%. So if you have a, a large project list and depending also on how your benefit cost ratios and your costs and your benefits are spread, it may still be quite beneficial to do optimization. But I think um, from this information, we can assume that uh, we, we're probably not going to get more than about a, a three, three to five percent improvement using full optimization for a scenario like this with costs and benefits and these type of benefit cost ratios. So I hope this video cleared up some of the confusion perhaps about what you are ranking on. And I think the, the take home message from this is that if you do your ranking on an intelligent parameter, you can actually get very close to the optimization solution. Regardless of that, Juno Viewer offers both a ranking based deterioration model and a op optimization based deterioration model. So contact us for further information on that if needed. Thank you for watching.